We'll take a look at the main new features of ON1 Photo Raw 2026. I'm using a beta version which may perform and look different than the production version. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is go over a few household items in ON1 Photo Raw 2026. You can see this layers panel right here. We can start customizing the interface a little bit more. So I can move this to the left here. So if I go to window, go to layers, I can nest it to the left instead. So I nested it to the left, but you don't see it because we need to activate the original presets panel right here. And you can see the layers panel showing right here. I can do the same thing with the masking tool. So if I go to properties, I can go to show. So this is the masking properties right here. I can nest it to the right if I want, or I can nest it to the left. Preferably, I don't like seeing the presets panel here, and I like all of this large space or this canvas space for the image. So usually I'm just gonna keep everything to the right. So I'm just going to close this panel of the presets, go to window, go to nest right, and go to nest right again. The other thing I want to quickly show you is the effects panel right here, or the effects tools. Let me just minimize this here. And you can see here, there's a few preset options. Now, if I go to blank, nothing shows, but now there's a few last used here. Then we have the on one recommends. So these are all the filters that on one recommends. And then there's also the Lightroom mimicking of the Lightroom panels right here. So if you're familiar with Lightroom, You'll remember the curves, color mixer, grading, and so forth in somewhat in this order. And the same thing with Capture One. You can also see all the presets right here, as well as some saved presets. And then if we go to Add Filter, we can see the filters have been customized, or I should say organized into Essentials, Creative, Landscape, and the Legacy ones, which most people don't use. I can hide the show legacy filters if I want. I can hide the description, but I think keeping them active is a good idea just for some help and just to see what's happening or what's available. And I can also start harding or favoriting my favorite filters just like that. I just did it randomly. The other thing I want to show you is the resize option here. So this photo is not edited. It should be edited. Before I show you resize, you can see how blurry it is, but I'm going to go to more. I'm going to go to resize here. And you can see a subtle adjustment in the lighting it did, but I'm going to zoom in and let me see if I can zoom in more and I'm going to resize this image. Usually I should be cropping it in if I want to print it or something like that, but I'll skip that for now and I'm going to go to resize and I'll resize it by, let's say, two times. And if you're printing, usually 300 uh, PPI is good or pixels per inch, I guess you can say. And you can see nothing's happening here. It does take a few seconds to process on the resize option here. And it looks like it's done. So let's see the before and after, before and after. So it's a subtle change with the new resize uh, engine here. And let me just hide that. So it's better to use with this new option, the highest quality. It does a really good job. It does take a few seconds to process. So you're going to see it right here. It's going to render. So now let's take a look at how it looks with the highest quality. So this is the before and this is the after. This is the before and this is the after. So obviously you do want to do some pre-editing to this if you want to make it look a little bit better and a little bit more detailed before you bring it into resize. We'll take a look at the new masking features in ON1 Photo Raw 2026. I'm going to quickly edit this photo with Brilliance AI and it just takes a second and that looks good. And you can see it automatically created some local adjustments or masks to adjust this photo. I can also see these masks right here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target the sky and the water at the same time using masking layers. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign or actually I'm gonna click on the sky first. So I'm gonna click on the sky and I have this new mask right here. I'll press the keyboard shortcut O to show you the mask. And I'm just gonna double click here again 
and you can see there's this target mask and the mask layers. So I already have the sky mask or targeted, but I'm going to add water to it. So I'm going to click on the plus sign right here. And there's a few options right here, but I'm going to click on the brush. I'm going to click on add. And I already have this brush selected. I can adjust the size and the feather if I want. I think I'll decrease the feather just like that. And I'll decrease the size. And that looks good. And the size is actually a little bit too small. So I can use the keyboard shortcuts, the left or square brackets, the left or right square brackets, I should say. And then I can just increase or decrease the size. But I'm going to start painting over the over this right now. And let me get this mask here. And let's see where I'm brushing. And I think that looks good. And this isn't to demonstrate a perfect, perfectly aligned mask along the edges. It's just to demonstrate the layers. I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut O to show you the mask. So now I have the targeted sky and the water at the same time. So you can see the mask layers. It created a brush mask and the sky mask and it combines it into this target mask. I'll just deactivate the overlay. And then I can start playing with these colors or the tonal range, but I'm just going to make something very minimal here. And I'm going to decrease the temperature or cool it just to make it look a little bit different. Of course, you can probably notice along the edges, I didn't do a good job of selecting the edges. I can use mask AI to select it or something like that. The water, keep in mind, this is a beta version, so it may look different when the production version is out. But you can see there's like a subject mask right here but we don't see any flora or animals or water right here. So that may change in the user interface in the future, because if I go to the develop section, actually, if I minimize this and actually scroll down, let me minimize this guy right here. And then you can see it did create flora, sky and water, just like you can see in brilliance AI, the flora, sky and water. So, the interface might slightly change, allowing you to quickly select the water in the future or use mask AI. Just keep that in mind. On one Photorod 2026 also improved its edge detection as well as masking fine hair or branches. This is a stock photo that I got from uh, Unsplash and I'm just going to demonstrate how it masks the hair of this uh, woman here. So I'm going to go to the local adjustments. I'm going to click on subject and it's going to automatically create a mask over her and we can see the target mask and I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut O to show you the mask and let me just zoom in here and we can see it did a pretty good job of selecting or masking the hair. It's not perfect but it's definitely better than previous versions. Of course, masking hair and trees or branches, I should say branches and leaves. It's a little bit difficult when you're far away, especially when there's a little bit of bokeh or depth of field going on. So the blurriness does make masking difficult for AI mask, but it did a pretty good job here. And what I can do is maybe just increase the exposure a little bit, increase the contrast. Maybe the vibrance, these adjustments don't necessarily make sense, but it's just to demonstrate how good or how decent the mask is. And I can actually go overboard to show you a better example of the mask and of the masking of the hair. Keep in mind, it doesn't always work, especially if you have a blurry photo. I did try it on, a, on an orangutan with a not so sharp photo with a little bit of noise and it didn't work well so that's why I had to get a stock photo but it works pretty good here so it really depends on like how clean or how different or how much contrast there is in the background as well as the sharpness in the image but overall it is a welcome improvement and it does look a little bit better with the mask AI when it comes to masking fine lines. A bright new feature is the depth lighting, which I'll demonstrate with this photo I took in Managua, Nicaragua. I'm first going to add some saturation and increase the vibrance and then 
I'll see how it looks by decreasing the highlights. I think I'll keep it like that. And then I'm gonna to go to the effects panel, click on add filter, and I'm gonna click on depth lighting. So depth lighting allows me to light up or darken the background separately from the foreground. It's pretty good for portrait photography, especially if you mess up with the strobe lights. But here are a few presets of the backlight, backlight WC, which I'm not too sure what that means, but here's the fill light, which you would usually use for portraits, including the high key and the low key. But I'm going to reset this and then I can individually change the foreground brightness or the lighting, including the background also individually. And if I go, let's say I want to darken the foreground and brighten the background, I can change the depth or where it transitions, where it starts to transition just like that. And then I can change the actual transition, which is kind of like the feathering, which is a little bit difficult to notice. Uh, but that's fine. And then I can also maybe change the temperature here. So the foreground, I will keep it warm. And the background, I will keep it cool. So let's see the before and after. Before and after. So I like how it looks with the depth lighting, but I think this will be a lot better or a lot more useful for portrait photography. But of course, you can use it for landscape lighting as well. We can easily transpose an image onto another using the double exposure filter, which I'll apply to this portrait. I'll go to the effects panel. I'll click on add filter. I'll go to double exposure under the creative section. And on one photo raw will automatically apply a texture or an image because it includes a bunch of them right here. And there's also different categories of these textures or images that you can apply. And if you want, there's an import button to import your own. So I'm going to select a different texture. I'll go to this 007, which looks pretty interesting. The one thing I can also do is with the texture, I can change the opacity. And I'm going overboard a little bit right now just to demonstrate. And I think I like this look a little bit better. And then I can also change the alignment or the position of the double exposure image or the transposed image using this icon right here or I can change the scale of it if I like and it looks like this texture this light 007 these are all like light leaks and then I can change the brightness sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work because it depends on the blend mode and if you don't know what blend modes are, I do have a separate tutorial on them. And let me see how it looks with the brightness at 100. That looks pretty interesting. And then I can also change the exposure just like that. So you really need to get a good balance between the blend mode, the opacity, the brightness and exposure to get the best look. One thing that I recommend is like try to have a background that's neutral or white or transparent. That usually works best. And another thing I can do is with this image itself, I can go to tone and color because a lot of these double exposure images, they look good when the initial image is monochrome or sepia. So I will decrease the saturation to zero and or minus 100. And you can see how it looks now. Looks a little bit interesting, but it's less saturated. So if I go to the effects panel, what I can do is maybe go to color overlay. Let's see how that looks. No, I don't like that. Maybe go to lighten or soft light or hard light. So these are different looks that this double exposure produces. And it depends on if your original image is also like monochrome, which I changed it to. But one other example that I'll show you is under the forest one. I'll go to forest and I have this 001 forest, but I'll show you different examples. So you can see with the forest double exposure or transpose images, it's better to have the initial image or the bottom layer image monochrome. I think it looks better, but I'll stick with this forest 001. I'll stick with hard light maybe increase the brightness and then increase the exposure. And I think 
This looks pretty interesting. Just like that. And I'll go back to the develop tool and let me increase the contrast, see how this looks. So this looks a little bit more grungy. And if I decrease the contrast, it'll look a little bit more soft. So you just gotta keep playing around or balancing the filters or the sliders with the double exposure filter. But that's just pretty much how it works and it's pretty quick to use. So it's a very good tool or a very good new tool in On One Photo Raw 2026. I already edited this photo that I took in the Corderia Blanca in Peru. This is the before and this is the after. This is the before and this is the after. By the way, the keyboard shortcut for the before view is the backslash. And what I can do now is I want to make the mountain or this subject, I guess you can say this is the subject, this focus mountain right here. I want to make it a little bit bigger. So what I can do is I can use the split field filter and I'll go right here, click add filter and then go to split field, which is usually used for landscape photography. So you can see this level right here or this uh, overlay and I'm just going to bring it down. And you can see it adjusting here, but before we can actually make or view what's happening, I'm gonna scale it. So I'm gonna make the background a little bit bigger. And then I can change where the transition is. So this overlay changes where the transition is. I can also rotate it if I want by going like this. This is good if you're, if you have like curves or if you have a lake that's circling a lot, but this one isn't. And then I can also change the transition. So you can see the double pointed arrow, but I can also change the transition right here. And I'm going to increase the transition, which I guess you can also say it's the feather. And that doesn't look good. So I'll make it a little bit smaller. And you can't even notice the transition here. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to move this mountain a little bit to the middle. And maybe you shouldn't in terms of cropping or using the rule of thirds, but I'm just going to demonstrate this to you. So there's this position section, adjust magnified region. I'll click on it and then I'll move my mouse over here. Then I'll click hold and drag to the left and move it to the left like that. So that looks pretty interesting and we can keep scaling this mountain to our liking. Keep in mind if this lake had a reflection, then you would need to adjust the angle of this overlay to make sure it includes the lake and the reflection. So you would need to kind of like put it in front of the reflection. But for this scenario, it isn't required. So let's see the before. This is the before and this is the after. This is the before and this is the after. So this is just a neat little tool if you want to make your backgrounds or your landscapes a little bit bigger. It's possible you can use it for cityscapes or other type of photos, but it just depends on how much distraction there is in the foreground and in the background. <laughs> 